Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we share and discuss the guitar gear news of the last month. Let's start! First of all, we have three new firmware upgrades for three amp modeling pedal boards that are the Boss GT1000, the Quad Cortex and the Headrush. The Boss GT1000 version 3.2 update adds some useful features. This is the official update list. We have 11 different mastering effects that allows us to shape the overall sound at the line output for different styles and playing situations. Then we have a new master delay type with five delay algorithms for the historic Boss Roland library that are the SD3000, the DD20 standard and the DD20 analog. And finally, the warm and glitch from the DD8. We also have more onboard speaker IRs for recording. In fact, the speaker IR section in recording mode has been expanded with the possibility to use original speaker types from different amplifiers. Also, the mic types have been expanded with the new Royer 1 to 1 ribbon mic simulation. Furthermore, Three mic blend types have been added to the speaker simulator block, which is something pretty cool. You know how much I think that mic simulations are important for our tone. Also, Edrush has released a new firmware upgrade, the version 2.4. What's new? Well, we have a new angle Powerball simulation. Actually, the new model covers all the four channels of the Powerball, so it's kinda having four amps. Furthermore, we have a new bus preamp, which is inspired by the Dark Glass Microtubes B7K Ultra version 2. It has a three-way toggle switch for low, mids and high mids, and three selectable frequencies per dial, as well as toggles for grunt and attack. Finally, we also have the Dunlop Octavia style octave fuzz, a tube overdrive boss SD1 style emulation, and the D250 drive, which looks to be a Digitech overdrive preamp, the 250. The last firmware upgrade is for the Neural DSP Quad Cortex, and it's a pretty big update with some pretty good new features. Let's go through the most interesting ones together. The first one is that finally we have the Looper. Yes, basically after one year since the Quad Cortex release, we have the Looper. It allows to record loops up to 4 minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> what a strange recording limit. The looper block can be placed anywhere on the grid and can be used in preset, scene or stomp mode. Furthermore, an active loop is persistent through preset changes as long as the preset you are changing to also has a looper block added. Quantize functions allows us to sync the looper to the quad cortex tempo or to an external MIDI clock. The threshold parameter allows the recording function to trigger when an audio signal is detected. So I think this is a pretty complete looper that was really missing in the Quad Cortex. Then we also have four new amps that are a Marshall Silver Jubilee, a Vox AC15, a Fender Blackface Princeton Reverb and a Fender Bassman. Then we have new delays, with an analog delay and a slapback delay, new modulations with the Boss CE2W, the TC Electronic TC2290, the TC Electronic Dreamscape and the MXR Flanger M117R. So a pretty big update, but we are still missing the computer app, which as you know is pretty important for us. But now that the looper has been released, I hope that Neural DSP is gonna work on the computer app. Also, the TC Electronic Plethora X5 has received a firmware upgrade with a new Alter Ego effect, which is basically the famous and really nice TC Alter Ego Vintage Eco. And this is a pretty interesting addition. 
which I like. We also now have the possibility to run the signal from right to left and not only from left to right. The external expression pedals should now work more smoothly and precisely, and the MIDI control latency should have been improved. All in all, we have some nice additions, improvements and optimization with this firmware upgrade that brings new life to the Plethora. Positive Grid has announced a new audio interface called Riff that's aimed specifically at guitar players. It's a portable USB audio interface with a sampling rate at 24 bit and 96 kHz and a dynamic range of 114 dB, which is a pretty good value. It has a guitar input, an headphone output, a standard quarter inch out, and a USB connection which unfortunately seems not to be Type-C, a kind of a bummer. It has a backlit LCD display and a knob to control the main functions of the BIOS software. It has an auto gain function to automatically adjust the input level according to your guitar signal and a direct mode for zero latency tracking. Its price is $99. So here BIAS is entering a pretty crowded market where the main strength of this interface in my opinion should be the integration with the BIAS software. Another interesting new product is the new Orange Guitar Butler, which is a switchable dual channel guitar preamp in a pedal format. The clean channel acts as a pedal platform with vintage voicing while the dirty channel uses an all analog JFIT circuit that is designed to emulate a classic 70s style drive tone. The Guitar Butler is an interesting product for guitarists that are looking to build an ampless pedal board running straight into either a power amp speaker cabinet or directly into a PA system. As regards connectivity we have a buffered effect loop and two outputs so you can plug the butler into an amp power amp via a quarter inch out or into a PA or an audio interface via a balanced XLR output that includes a speaker cabinet simulation. It is plenty of knobs to tweak your tone. It runs at 18 volts, it weights 1.3 kilos and the price is $429.399. Euros. And now I would like to talk about the new X Amp Academy. As we are getting close to the official release date, which should be in March. Let's describe the Amp Academy. First of all, it offers pretty nice uh, amp models that are, for instance, a Fender Twin Reverb, a Fender Vibro King, a Mesa Boogie Mark I, a Friedman Brown Eye, a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier, and a Bogner Ubershall. It is based on the TCAC HD white box algorithm that is built also inside the new XMG30. Therefore, it should offer the same amp modeling quality of the MG30. You can load your own IRs at up to 1024 sample points in 18 empty slots, and there are 10 IRs built in. It offers a noise suppressor, an FX block which can be assigned to a compressor, a booster or an overdrive, an EQ and a reverb. And you can connect external effects in the chain via its send and return outputs. It offers six presets with three scenes to seamlessly change parameters. It has two foot switches. The AB foot switch lets you switch from clean amp style to crunch. On the other hand, the scene foot switch can toggle scene 1, 2 or 3 sequentially. It has a pretty nice editor software that lets us tweak the signal blocks and parameters. You have the classic control knobs for gain, master, bass, mid, treble and presence. Furthermore, there are three toggle switches to be used to change scenes or amp models. Pressing the right foot switch, you can enter Alt mode or exit it. In regular mode, the boost knob controls some effect parameters, like the boost level. In Alt mode, the boost knob controls the decay of the built-in reverb. Let's now describe the I.O. It has an input for the guitar, 
and an output jack and a stereo insert jack, which can be used with a provided stereo cable to connect external effects to the Amp Academy. Furthermore, it has also two toggle switches for the ground loop and for activating or deactivating the IRs. On the side, it has an XLR output, an aux in, and an headphone out. It can serve as a USB audio interface with Type-C connectivity. The conversion rate is 48 kHz at 32 bits, with a dynamic range of 112 dB. It runs at 9 volts, 300 mA, the dimensions are 105 by 115 by 58 mm, and it weighs just 440 grams. In fact, it is pretty light. So here we have a new contender for the Strymon Iridium or the Amplify Firebox or the Boss ER200, but at a fraction of the price with its $199 price tag, which is a pretty interesting price. I have an Amp Academy here in my studio, so don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell not to miss my demo review, which is gonna be released when the product is gonna be officially launched. Let's now talk about guitars. Ibanez is releasing new RG Premium and AZ Premium models. I would focus this video on the AZ guitars, which are the ones I like the most. We have the new AZ Premium AZ42P1 that comes in gloss black finish, has a rosewood fretboard and comes loaded with a pair of Seymour Duncan Hyperion pickups with chrome covers and the Dyna switching system, which has 10 variations and a coil split. It has a GoTo tremolo system, the MGT locking tuners, and a graph tech NUT, and the price is $1,733. Then we have a new 7-string model, which is the AZ427P1PB. It comes with a rusted maple neck and a rosewood fretboard, a lightweight basswood body, coupled with a poplar burr, plus 24 jumbo stainless steel frets. The hardware includes a Goto bridge, a set of Goto MGT locking machine heads, and a Graftec nut. Finally, we have a set of Seymour Duncan Hyperion 7 unbuckers with the Dyna switching system. The price is $1,933. Then we have the Ibanez AZ Premium AZ471QM. This new model adds three updates to the AZ premium formula. An ebony fretboard with 24 jumbo stainless steel frets, a new HSH pickup configuration and a set of Di Marzio pickups. The price is $1,866. Another news is that we have a new incredible guitar that is the result of a collaboration between Ibanez and Steve I, which is called the Hydra. Well, it's an incredible guitar with three necks one with seven strings, one for 12 string, and the last one for the bass, which also has fretless strings. It has a single coil, unbucking, piezo, midi, and sustainer pickups, and you have both floating and hardtail tremolo bridges. It is an incredible guitar that you can check out in some YouTube and Instagram videos that has been just released. Let me finish this video, as always, with some music suggestions, just so that we can exchange some nice CD tips in order to discover together new music or discover again old classics. Here you have mine for this video and of course feel free to suggest yours in the comment section below. Now, we have mentioned previously the new Steve Vai guitar and therefore here I would mention the new Steve Vai CD, which is called Unviolate and has been released in January. This is a super enjoyable CD that I'm listening over and over since its release. The first song is very fascinating, with a cool initial arpeggio and some very interesting changes. It's so cool and intriguing, I can go on listening it forever. The whole CD proceeds with very enjoyable songs where Steve's compositional skills really excels, obviously together with his incredible guitar playing that is so personal and unmatchable. 
Thank you, Steve, for this new amazing collection of songs. We have now reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell, and leave a thumbs up. It would be of a great help. If you're interested in my IRs, you can check out the link in the card above or description below, where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.